So my name is Jenny Burak and I am an astrologer and a Theta Healing instructor. I give these weekly um, energy reports with the help of Archangel Metatron, who I've been working with, I worked with as a child and then more recently uh, consciously was working with him. So I asked, um, when Theta Healing we go, you learn how to go up into the energy of God. And I asked um, what to say about this week, and I was given um, the picture of a roller coaster and having a lot of fun and just riding with the energies. And then I asked Archangel Metatron what he had to say about it, and he said that we should buckle up and enjoy the ride. So here we go. <laughs> I'm curious to know how everyone did with the full moon energies. I... I had a really difficult morning, made an appointment with my teacher for a healing session because this moon was ruled by Venus, and Venus is about our value, um, beauty, money, so a lot of those issues will be coming up for people, and then it was, the moon was, you know, always opposing the sun during a full moon, so we had the sun in Aries answering to Mars, who is out of bounds still. This has been for a few weeks now that Mars has been traveling out of bounds. Out of bounds means, you know, this is the Earth and the planets or the planets um, aspect us in a certain number of, it's the latitude and longitude lines that you're going by with how they fall. Their, I don't know if you'd say shadow, but their energies are hitting the Earth in such a way that they fall between um, I can't remember the lower degree, so I'm not going to give the numbers, but Mars has been out of the typical planet orbit. So when a planet, any planet is out of bounds, it's called, uh, you don't know what's going to happen. And Mars is violence and anger, aggression. And we've got a lot of planets, three planets answering one, the sun answering to that Mars and Mercury retrograde and Uranus, which is shock and awe and uh, big changes, like big shifts and changes. And Mars is also in his sign of exaltation when he's in Capricorn. So he's getting it, you know, he's very serious about his job. He wants action and he wants stuff to happen. And he's coming up just now within one degree to Saturn. Saturn is restriction, blockade, um, it's what makes you get your stuff together before you can go any further. Like when there's stuff that you need to deal with first, he makes sure that you deal with that stuff first. Um, when Mars and Saturn come into aspect like this, like any time that you're talking about situations of war or violence, you're talking about those two energies. So we're dealing with a lot of that energy. And then, you know, Mars has got the sword. He wants to get through stuff. He's up against this huge barrier. We've got Mercury retrograde. We're feeling a lot of frustration, a lot of frustration, um, a lot of like, I didn't get my way kind of thing. And this can go back. This doesn't have to be like something that happens to you today, but it's a lot of that feeling. And then that full moon was aspecting like Vulcanus, Atlantis, um, it was bringing up a lot of things for us, especially those of us who have been around for quite a while. Uh, and then what else? We've got um, Neptune in his home of Pisces. Chiron is sitting at um, the end of Pisces on the fixed star sheet. And sheet relates to imprisonment, murder, suicide, drowning, and extreme misfortune. So we've got Chiron, the wound, sitting on that point until April 17th, April 17th. So that's going to be, and he's been there for a while. So um, the moon will, is going to stay in Libra. So, you know, Libra is a, an air sign. It's easygoing. It's pretty happy, Libra. So that energy will be shifting, uh, will feel a lot less tension once the weekend passes. But also, you know, all year we're dealing with Jupiter in that 
what's called a sextile, which is an easy aspect. So it means that they're having an easy flow of communication to Pluto, who has been in Capricorn for quite a while and is at 21 degrees. Today, I think Jupiter is at 22. But they're, these are big guys. Like they're, they're talking to each other. Pluto rules Scorpio where Jupiter is. Scorpio is that still fixed water. It's dark. It's mucky. Nobody wants to go there. No one knows what's down there. Jupiter is the planet, and everyone has Jupiter in their chart. So Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter, and the, Jupiter is the ancient ruler of Pisces. And Jupiter is what pushes us to find the truth of our existence. Jupiter wants to know everything. Jupiter wants the truth of the situation. So Jupiter is in Scorpio, dredging the bottom of that swamp. So that's deep psychological matters. It's also things going on in... Pluto is in the sign of government. It's things that are hidden, especially involving money and, and abuse of power. That's all coming up. And that goes on. That started last October, and it goes on through the middle of November of 2018. That's part of, you know, that the master year, 2018. That's an 11. Master, um, the master year with that Jupiter trudging through Scorpio. That's not a coincidence, obviously. Uh, so it's about us getting our stuff together and bringing things up to the surface to heal. And it's also about finding out the truth of what's going on with those in power, with their money. That's who is actually in power. Like the ones who are sitting in the office, they don't really have power without money. So who, it's whoever's backing them. So that will be really interesting to watch that play out for the rest of the year. That's also like related to sexual scandals. So it's like also abuse of power through, um, you know, acts of sex. It's things that we don't talk about normally. Um, and then we've still, we've got the sun still in that square aspect, those 90 degree angle aspects to um, Mars and Saturn sitting there together. We've got, I drew, I'm not an artist clearly, but there's Lilith, Black Moon Lilith. She is the one who gives us our, like, you know, I'm going to fight for my independence. She, The myth is that she was the second wife of Adam who didn't want to put up with the, um, you know, I have to be subservient. So she checked out of the garden. She's in all of our charts, man or woman. It's where you find your independence, where you assert yourself, where you want your freedom. And she, not today, so I won't talk about it yet, but she's going to be coming up here pretty quick to a very interesting um, fixed star as well. Um, and then also I wanted to say about, uh, sheets, the one who Chiron is sitting on, that it also brings mental creativity. So, you know, just like what I've been saying with, with Lilith pushing for her independence by finding something solid that she has to, you know, to stand on a foundation using the, your creativity, like any kind any idea that you've got now for a home business or, you know, anything that you want to start in order to find independence, financial independence, um, just like a better sense of value, of worth for yourself, that's a great energy for that. It's it's a spectacular energy for that. I mean, these energies, yeah, they're difficult, but you, you always have a choice with what you do with the energy. So what Metatron was saying about um, a few weeks ago with Mars sitting at the galactic center of, uh, in Sagittarius, at the end of Sagittarius, before he came into... Capricorn, he showed me um, a locomotive. Well, it was a coal train, actually. Not that he's a proponent of coal, I assume. I didn't ask him, but um, but uh, it, it was being filled. Like, the coal chute was just being filled. Like, like the loaves and fishes story. Like, the coal was just packed into that train, and that train was going on a long, a long ride. That's Mars going through Capricorn. He actually gains momentum as he gets, gets to the top of that mountain. So... The moon will make an aspect here later in the week, and we'll talk about that. So Sunday, that's the energy that we're working with. It's tense. It's um, it's a lot of energy. It's, you know, like Creator showed me that roller coaster that we're all on, and we're all having a great time on it. So if you're, like, having a lot of issues with all of these things, you can always ask your angels, your personals, as I call them, to, um, re you know, pull some of that energy off of you. Uh, that's what I always used to do. That's what they're there for, and they can't do that unless you ask them for help. They never will interfere. So ask them for help. That's what they're there for. You ask for them, by the way, your personals. You ask to have 
you know, the, the beings that are guiding you, the beings of love and light that are with you all the time, you're close to them. You know them. They want to help you. And so just ask them to help you and they will. On Monday, Mars will move past Saturn. So we'll have less of that tension and anger. Um, but that, that could still be a little bit in the ethers on Monday. He'll move past him though. And then he'll go on to nine of Capricorn. The degree nine Capricorn, Saturn is going to start his retrograde there. After he sits there for six days, he's going to sit on nine Capricorn. So watch what happens tomorrow, or sorry, on Monday, with um, with Mars moving to that ninth degree. That was whatever comes up, even if it comes to your mind or anything that's like flagged for you to pay attention to. You can ask for for an obvious sign, a kind obvious sign uh, for issues. When Saturn sits there, it's actually nine degrees and nine minutes that he's going, where he's going to start his retrograde. That's not a coincidence, obviously. Numerology, we know nine is the ending of a cycle. So see if anything comes up for you on Monday. And Neptune will move one degree. He's slow. Uh, he'll move just one degree onto the fixed star Ashenar or Arcanar. Anyway. What it means is access to another realm. So I think that's fantastic. He's going to sit there until May 6th. So even though we've got like a lot of these, you know, this tension and stress and, you know, everyone's feeling it, especially people who don't pay attention to these things. Those are the people like we're here holding the light for those people who are like, what's going on? Because they're, even if they don't have any idea about energy or astrology, they're feeling it too. They just are manifesting it in different ways. But um, we've got so much support from spirit. We've got Neptune access to other realms. So I just see like light beings coming in, just pouring in and all around us. Uh, Tuesday, the moon will conjunct Jupiter in Scorpio. That's a lot of feeling because the moon is our emotions and it's conjunct Jupiter, which blows things up and expands things. That can also be very fortuitous day, especially if you... Like for your planets in Scorpio, if you are a Scorpio, sun, moon, ascendant. Um, and then Lilith, Lilith is going to end up on Vega. Vega is the brightest star in the northern sky. She carries the energy of Venus and Neptune and Mercury. So that's a very fortunate star. The ancients, um, they like some people only do astrology with the fixed stars. That's how much information there are there. Are, in the fixed stars. And I actually was asking Mary Magdalene when I was writing this and she pointed out to me that, um, the Vega star, because the Vega star means the queen of life. So I thought that was pretty awesome because, you know, Lilith is typically associated with the female. She gets a bad reputation of being a bitch, but so, you know, there's a little bit of that too, but she's mainly, yeah, she has chutzpah. They're saying chutzpah. So, oh, and I wanted to say happy Passover, happy Easter to everyone. We used to celebrate both of those in this house. And she also, also gives creativity. So she's going to be sitting there for quite a while. Lilith also moves pretty slowly. So we've got that, you know, Chiron on the fixed star um, sheet, which is about mental creativity. Then we've got Vega in play here with Lilith creativity again. So that's a great, like I said, great time to start whatever it is that you've been thinking about starting. Just take one little step and the universe is going to back you with these energies. So Wednesday, we've got the moon moving into Sagittarius. So that'll be a relief. Definitely moon and Sagittarius always. Sagittarius are, you know, they're so outgoing. They're so friendly. Everybody likes the Sagittarius. They have such a light energy. Um, it'll be about the moon's going to be telling some truth when he's in Sagittarius. We've got Mercury and Neptune Contra parallel. So when I was talking about the way that the planets are aspecting the earth, the earth, <laughs> this would be like almost like an opposition. So they're talking to each other and it's Mercury and Neptune. And then we've got Eris and Juno, who I didn't draw, um, but they're asteroids that are, they're the divine, divine feminine. Uh, Juno was, you know, Hera, the wife of Jupiter. She, she knows what's going on. She knows all, the, the entire backstory. She's got it all down. 
She knows what's up. She's sort of like that older woman who just listens and takes everything in. She's in charge. Everyone knows she's in charge. They try to keep secrets from her. Juno knows what's going on. And then Eris, who is that divine feminine energy of making sure that the that the human race continues. She also has a very bad reputation of being very angry, but it's more like her, yeah, she's fighting for life. And then Chiron is contra parallel to them. So for Wednesday, Tuesday actually, starting like Tuesday evening and into Wednesday, because of Neptune's involvement, I feel like it could be with the Neptune Mercury, it's going to be something about a woman that's either been hidden or there's going to be a lie that comes out. Or we could be told a lie because whenever Neptune is involved, you're going to have to like check that twice. And Mercury's retrograde too as he's talking to Neptune. So it could be that Mercury's bringing up something from the past that we've been lied to about. Or it could be that we're told a big lie. But it'll definitely involve a female because you've got the Eris, Juno, um, Chiron involvement with that. So that's like Tuesday, Wednesday. Mercury will square Saturn. Mercury going retrograde coming in again to square Saturn. So, yeah, that's like a feeling of frustration uh, being, you know, a 90 degree is a square. So that's like a, a block of some sort. Mercury in retrograde could be like, oh, you forgot to do this. Could be something with someone in authority, like don't have a talk with your boss that day <laughs> if you can avoid it, unless you know for sure your boss loves you. Um, and then moon, yes, yeah, so we're going to have the moon, Mercury, and Saturn all talking to each other. That's Wednesday. Thursday, the 5th, the moon in Sagittarius will form a trine, which is a nice energy to the sun in Aries. And it will, they will both be aspecting, oops, they will both be aspecting Neptune. So that's a happy day. That's on um, Thursday. Jupiter will move back into a sextile, the sextile with at 21 degrees of Scorpio will be in a perfect sextile again. So they've, they've, they're on two now. They've got one more. But they're still, like, they'll be in a sextile type of energy just because of the signs, the way that the signs aspect one another. But that could be, that could be bringing up a secret. Again, you've got Neptune involved. You've got the moon. You've got the sun. So we could be finding out something. Sun is like someone in authority, as what Saturn is too, but the sun also is. And then we've got... Um, you know, the moon telling truth in Sagittarius. Friday, the moon in Sagittarius will be sitting at the galactic center. So the Mars was on the, the galactic center in mid-March. There were a few days in there. So anything that it was like, I think it was the 11th of March, and it sat there for a few days. So anything that was going on then for you might come back now because we're, we're in a re Mercury retrograde and the moon's going to hit that point again. Mars will aspect the nodes of fate. Mars is about action. So this will be like meeting someone um, that was going to help you go forward on your path. Uh, it could be somebody that you, from your past, that comes back that you had an argument with. This is a great time to forgive. And, yeah, with that Mars aspect in the nodes of fate, though, with everything else that's happening with Mars, that's a big day for Friday, whatever goes on that day. Um, if it's a situation that comes up to be, like, for final resolution, it could be something that comes up now that you'll go back and have a resolution for. But it's, you know, Jupiter retrograde in Scorpio. Jupiter brings us opportunities. So that aspect of the nodes of fate by Mars could be an opportunity coming back to us. You know, it's important to keep in mind too, Saturn, Pluto, Lilith, and Mars are all in Capricorn. And they aren't just like, okay, now we've got them pretty in the conjunction, but they're also parallel. They're just one degree away from each other parallel, all four of them. You know, these are badasses is what I'm saying. And they're all in the sign of government. So we'll see what happens with that. And that's been going on now for weeks, and it's going to continue for quite a while. Mars is out of bounds, and then the rest of them sort of follow suit. They're in bounds, but they're they're close. And then that evening, Friday evening, the moon will move into Capricorn. It looks like for the coming weekend, it's a lot of work being done. So that fits really well with moon and Capricorn. Because we're, we're, we'll have the moon come up to Saturn and trine Venus. That's also a nice energy. Yeah, so it's work that's valuable, 
that makes you feel valued, that makes you feel happy, maybe something around the house that's like to make the house prettier. That's a nice way to handle that energy for Saturday. Uh, the, yeah, it's a very, and then also when you've got that aspect with Saturn, with the moon and Venus, if there is someone that you've been thinking of letting go in a relationship, that could be the day that that happens. I wouldn't say with this, with that aspect with Venus and Saturn, it's like a good date night. I mean, it could be, you know, it's also Saturn also brings like a solid foundation. So if you want to look at it that way. But it's not like a lot of battle stuff. Mars isn't involved. And then Sunday morning, we'll start out with the moon and with up here with Pluto and Capricorn aspecting Jupiter. So Sunday is, I mean, I don't want to say it's super heavy day, but it's, it's pretty heavy on Sunday. Next Sunday. So anyway, that is all I have for this week. I'm going to be starting a video series coming up about Chiron making his entrance into Aries and Uranus then entering Taurus. So they will both be following the directions of Venus, who rules Taurus, and Mars, who rules Aries. They each will be there for a period of seven years, and Chiron deals with the wounds, the wound that never heals, the wounded healer. It's the key in your natal chart to your healing because it, it's, um, it, what am I trying to say? Not rotates, but anyway, <laughs> it, it orbits. Thank you. Between, um, between Uranus and like, while it's the way that it, it, you know, it's orbiting around the sun, but it, it only goes between Uranus and Saturn because Saturn is the Lord of karma. Uranus is the freedom from karma. Chiron is the wound. So whenever you, wherever Chiron falls in your natal chart, it's going to tell the story of your wound. And it's typically something that happens quite a while ago, but it played out again in this lifetime. So Chiron entering Aries. Aries is the masculine. Aries is war and battle. And Aries is the I am presence. We're talking about the healing of the divine masculine that's going to go on for seven years. And it will be taking direction from Mars. And at the same time, like, like, well, I guess it's about a month later, but a month later. So Venus will be actually be, be in Taurus when Chiron enters Aries. Then she will move out and Uranus will move in. Uranus is that energy that I was saying. It's like a tornadic energy. It's like a abrupt change. Um, yeah, something that you didn't see coming, something that maybe you think is a negative thing, but then it turns out to be awesome. Um, Uranus coming into Taurus will see a lot of changes on the earth, geographic changes. Um, also, it's uh, higher wisdom and knowledge, like revelations coming in. If Uranus aspects the moon in your natal chart, you'll have some sort of a, you know, some intuitive gift could be opened up, a psychic gift. Uh, so we'll see what happens when Uranus comes into Taurus for the collective. That will be definitely something interesting. We'll probably find also a way to clean up the oceans. Um, we'll find new ways to farm. It'll become like commonplace for people to be trying out new innovative techniques with things in relation to the earth. So that's awesome. Um, but that'll be for seven years. I'm going to be doing a video series with Jesus, Sananda, um, Sananda Jesus is the name that he incarnated as and Mary Magdalene for the healing of the divine feminine and the divine masculine. I'm going to go just according to the astrology, whatever's happening with Venus and with Mars, uh, through that time. So if you want to subscribe, you'll get the notifications for that. And my website is astrologyforascension.com. If you have any questions about like how this is going to affect your natal chart, you could leave it in the comments. And everybody have a great week. All right. Ride that roller coaster. Okay. Bye-bye.